Welcome back to the RipeWave Audio Community, where we explore together all types of home audio systems from hi-fi to home theater. My name is John, and for this video, we continue our series on AV processors and receivers as a buyer's guide to what is available in 2020. Our fifth video in this series is subtitled Part 5, 5 with 10 channels, and complements parts 1 through 4, where we explored 16, 15, 13, and 12 channel processor models. If you missed previous videos of the AV Processor Receiver Buyer's Guide 2020 series, I have provided the links for your convenience in the description. We have noticed that as we descend in channel count from 16, we see certain attributes start to drop from processors. While we have yet to deeply explore each model, certain surface level details are noticeably absent, or at least diminished, by the time the 10 channel models come up. These include balanced inputs, balanced outputs, expansion modules, professional AES EBU input support, independent subwoofer control uh, will only be seen under 13 channels with a, a single 9-channel model from Marantz. And don't be confused if a unit has dual ports on the back. Uh, check the manual uh, to make sure that it is independently controllable. DTSX Pro support which is not required for 11.1 .1 setups and below. Uh, brands such as uh, Focal, Datasat, Trinoff, Macintosh, Bryston, Storm Audio, Audio Control, JBL Synthesis, Arcuus, Monoprice, Lexicon, Arcam, and Rotel currently don't have uh, products uh, that are AV processors uh, unless the channel count is higher. 7.1 inputs start to disappear as well, along with full pre-outputs. Uh, it becomes more common with receivers to see pre-outputs as a subset, including those that only offer the pre-outs for subwoofers. Power ratings of receiver models uh, typically go down even though it should be possible to maintain or even increase output as channel count drops. Clearly this is done to meet a price point target the manufacturer believes they need to hit to be successful within a channel count category. Using Sony as an example we see that uh, the 12 channel STR ZA 5000 ES has nine channels of amplification rated at 130 watts with two channels driven. The 10 channel Sony model, which uses the same chassis size, the STR-ZA3100ES, is rated 20 watts less per channel at 110 watts for two channels driven. Now, as both ratings are for 8 ohm loads and all other factors being equal, there is not a technical reason for the STR-ZA3100ES to have a lower rating. With the lack of pre-outs, those only needing 10 channels of processing uh, will be faced with moving to 12 channel model if you desire more power, leaving two spare outputs unnecessarily. There are a few six exceptions where the manufacturer actually gives you equal or more power, but as that is not the typical practice. In moving from 12 to 10 channels, we did not identify any models with independent dual sub control, so there is no 11 channel models to cover. The two drop channels can fall either from the height or ear level. For example, you can keep the ear level fixed at 7 channels and move from a 7.1.4 to a 7.1.2. Two configuration or hold on to the four channels in the heights and drop to five on ear level with a 5.1.4 configuration. 
it is possible to set up a nine channel ear level plane if you want to forego heights altogether with a pure 9.1 setup. The field of 10 channel models is not crowded like the 12 channel grouping. The price range is narrower too. As we discover additional models or obtain a better understanding of real processing count, the cost of entry table keeps evolving. The updated table for this part is as follows. Six channels remains at $200 for 5.1 system. Eight channels at $350 for 7.1 system. Now we can now say that the 10 channel with the full data set in now for the cost of entry for 10 channels uh, is $680. For 12 channels, it remains at $799. 13, $1,200. 15 channels at $2,499 and 16 channels starts at $2,999. Now once again, Onkyo sets the cost of entry bar. For 10 channel models, they do so with the TXRZ797 at $679. Now we will provide an overview for the full field of 10 channel processors, but we won't get into the full details of these products with the first pass. New to this guide series is the Pioneer Elite brand. However, we discovered while inspecting the 10 channel models that Pioneer also has two 13 channel models we neglected to cover in part three, the SCLX904 and the SX, uh, S SCLX704 from their Elite range. Once again, we will explore these from highest to lowest cost, and this time the list begins with Sony. Sony STR-ZA3100ES. The Sony STR-ZA3100ES borrows its design language from other Sony ES models, targeting the custom installation market, as observed with their flagship, the STR-ZA5000ES. Aside from dropping two channels of amplification and adding two analog inputs, the layout on the back is identical. While the amplifiers drop a few watts, support for Dolby Atmos, DTSX, IMAX Enhance, and Sony's Digital Cinema Auto Calibration software remains with the 2016 introduced model that sells for $1,699. Yamaha Avantage A2080. Dropping down from the 12 channel A3080, the Advantage line continues with the 10 channel A2080. Bucking the trend, the A2080 has the same number of amplifiers and power handling as the A3080. The two extra channels uh, which are XLR balance connections provided by the A3080 as pre-outs are removed in the A2080, limiting it to a 9.1 versus a 11.1 configurations. This lowers the cost to $1,600 for this 2018 model with Dolby Atmos, DTSX, and YPOW room correction support. Sony STR-ZA2100ES. If you don't plan on using external amplification aside from height channels, now or in the future, the Sony STR-ZA2100ES offers savings over the STR-ZA3100ES, selling for $300 less at $1,399. Also released in 2016, the STR-ZA2100ES also emits the onboard 8-port network switch, but has the same support for Dolby Atmos, DTSX, and DC-AC calibration. Pioneer Elite VSX-304 We already introduced Pioneer's parent, Onkyo, in Part 3. However, Pioneer has a long history before being acquired. 
Pioneer Corporation was founded in Tokyo as a radio and speaker repair shop and evolved to roles in the development of cable TV, the laser disc player, the first automotive compact disc player, DVD and DVD recording, plasma displays, OLED, and produced the first AV receiver with digital Dolby. Pioneer Home Electronics was sold to Onkyo in 2014. The Elite brand represents the highest level of Pioneer's products and is targeted for discerning audiophiles. The Pioneer Elite VSX304 is a sub $1,000 entry retailing at $799. It is the first model we have covered that only provides pre-outs for the subwoofers from the surround source. While the VSX304 has a down mix stereo pre-out for separate zones, that output doesn't benefit the home theater setup. Dolby Atmos and DTSX are supported on this model. Both Pioneer and Parent Onkyo provide their own brand for room calibration software. However, Pioneer keeps their multi-channel acoustic calibration system MCACC solution exclusive. Onkyo brands their room calibration software as AccuEQ. RipeWave Audio would like to know how similar or unique MCACC and AccuEQ are and if one does a better job at this function. The VSX304 is a 2019 model. Onkyo TX NR797. The last entry for 10 channel processing is the Onkyo TX NR797. The TX NR797 falls beneath Onkyo's 12 channel TXRZ840 receiver. The TX NR797 follows the channel reduction trend by also dropping amplifier output by 20 watts per channel and reduces the non-zone pre-outputs to only a subwoofer output. Onkyo retains support for Dolby Atmos, DTSX, IMAX Enhance, and AccuEQ room calibration. This unit sets the cost of entry for 10 channels with a selling price of $679. With full nine channels of amplification built in, the package is great for those looking to affordably achieve 7.1.2 setup with compatibly efficient speakers. That completes the 10 channel edition of the series model overview. As you could see, with these models, we begin to see the omission of more brands and features along with the trend to reduce amplifier output as channel count drops. These trends will continue in our next video for 9 and 8 channel models. RipeWave Audio wishes there were a few more low channel count models with high grade components and top specifications for their amplifiers and other attributes. For some, room size will dictate the total number of, number of channels. If an enthusiast with room limitations wants to have a high-end AV processor, they will likely be forced into models with more channels than they need. As we close on 10 channel models, one final immers immersive configuration remains, the 5.1.2 configuration, which 9 and 8 channel processors can support. We will also see that the 8 channel processor category is the largest grouping with RipeWave audio covering 30 models. This suggests the sweet spot for surround sound systems continues to be balanced between ear level only and the introduction of height channels as consumers are still determining whether or not to take the immersive plunge. With that said, of the 116 models, this series is currently tracking 71 models have at least 10 channels, or 61% have 10 channels. So the tide is turning towards immersive experience.
If you own a 10 channel receiver, I would be interested in hearing your feedback. Please include in the comments section, do you feel that 10 channels are sufficient? Do you long for features found in higher count models? That feedback would be useful to the RipeWave audio community. Furthermore, if you enjoyed this video and are interested in enhancing your audio experience, please like and subscribe to this RipeWave audio community and be sure to select the bell icon so you will be notified as soon as the next video is posted. Until then, keep evolving your audio experience. Thank you.